development and scale innovating solutions in mentoring. So this is our host, John and York. Thank you very much. And I'm handing on the session to you guys. Thank you, Hagid. <clears throat> and thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, for us from YBI, um, it's really great to see over 50 people here today to join us today. Um, for YBI, it's kind of a new thing that we support um, uh, mentors from our members directly. Um, and we feel very privileged to have the opportunity to be here today. So before we start, I would just um like to say a little bit about what's going to happen today so we will have a look um at ybi's mentoring approach the way we see and understand mentoring the way we do it and we will have a look at um managing transition and change as mentors um so this is really very much related to the to the covid crisis um, and we have a couple of tools for you today. Um, one of them is um, controlling the controllables, kind of a standard in mentoring. And um, the, this is something we want to, uh, want to demonstrate and want to show how to use that. Um, we will have um, a little break um, so that we can get a glass of water in between because we know it's pretty tiring in front of the screen uh, for 90 minutes. Um, so then we will have a look at a, at a checklist. Um, so it's called kind of a checklist. I see it more as kind of guidelines. Uh, guideline, if you uh, talk to your mentee in these challenging times, you can expect a rather difficult conversation. Um, and the how to manage that, what's a good first topic, what's a good second, um, so a member, our member from Nigeria, um, the CEO, has developed um, a checklist I would like to share with you today. And then uh, towards the end, we want to get the entrepreneur into the room um, so that we have a bit more, so to make it all real. Um, and that's pretty much it, the, what we're going to do today. So if you have any questions, um, please click on um, the chat box um, and insert your questions there. Um, we will check the chat box if there are any questions and try to answer that as soon as possible. Um, that's it for me. The... John, anything you would like to add? Not at this moment, Jörg. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do all my stuff when, when I get to my, uh, my part of the agenda. Good. So, the, when we talk about mentoring um, at YBI, I should say in the beginning that we have, well, there are different ways of doing mentoring, and there's not the, the one way which is perfect and the solves it all. But the way we see mentoring um, is the, uh, we have three distinct areas we want to focus on in a mentoring relationship. So of course there's the mentee's business, but there's also the mentee, the person. Um, and the third area is really the relationship between mentor and mentee. And the, yeah, let's say the American way of mentoring, the mentor is more like a member of the board of directors, a bit more directive, where YBI's approach is a bit less directive. So really making it clear that the, the entrepreneur, the mentee, really is the pilot in the plane. And our role as mentors is to assist um, as best as possible, as best as we can. John, would you like to add to that? Then over to you. Okay, thank you. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think the main point here is that this has been YBI's um, core philosophy in, in training and developing uh, mentors and working with programs around the world, um, certainly since 2008. Um, and we see all three circles um, connecting. It's so important. You know, we don't differentiate the person from the business. And also what's critical with the relationship is to build a very high trust uh, so that you can get into those 
deeper issues, deeper conversations, and to review the relationship is, is an important part of, of, uh, of, of mentoring. Uh, it's, it's very much a, a two-way thing. It's not something that a mentor does to an entrepreneur. It's, it's, the, um, it's what happens uh, between both parties and the value is, and growth and learning is, is very much for both parties. Okay, Jörg? Yeah. Okay. So, would you like me to continue with, um, uh, with wow, this is a big uh, um, uh, bit of uh, uh, um, philosophy here and model and, you know, so I'm going to explain this. Um, first thing I'd like to do though, and you, and you did say earlier, is there anything I wanted to say? Well, what I should have said at the very beginning was, um, was Shalom to uh, Karim uh, 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 Shamish, and we are, as Jörg said earlier, we are delighted to be part of your mentor learning today um, and also to be part of having um, an audience, an international audience. So, um, so we're kind of uh, remote. We're, um, we're remote from each other in the sense of all being in our own rooms, uh, but we are connected and uh, we're very, you know, we're, well, we're very grateful to be asked to do this with such a great you know, international audience. So, um, so let's crack on with managing transitions um, and why we've chosen this really for, um, you know, to be our, our critical uh, philosophy during COVID. Um, and the Kubler-Ross, Kubler-Ross um, really uh, created this um, uh, model of change in 1969 it's been known as the grief cycle to some, and it was adapted from her book on death and dying. Um, and, um, and it is our go-to model, as I mentioned, for COVID. And, um, and you can see the, and as I go through this, you'll see the applications to, um, uh, to anyone confronted with a, an event, a shock, and what happens um, uh, to us when, um, when we are faced with what's called reactive um, change. And this is what happens with transitions. You know, it starts off as, um, as something we react to rather than anticipate. You know, it's something that happens out the blue. And to illustrate this, you know, I'd like to talk about a young man called Tom. And Tom um, uh, had, uh, his first business was, um, was, uh, was creating pies food pies and anybody that's interested have a look at tomspies.co.uk and you'll see his uh, his website and tom's story is that um, over 14 years tom has built his business from selling pies in a market on a friday morning um and from those uh you know weekly um excursions to the market he now has two food factories. And so those food factories employ over 100 people. Um, and he's, uh, he's expanded his business into, um, into prepared food for, the, for restaurants, um, for airlines. You know, so that has become probably about two thirds of his business. And the original pie is probably about a third of his business. Um, and to put it into some numerical value, um, last year's turnover was around, around uh, 15 million uh, pounds. So that's getting on to, you know, getting, well, before, the, before we suffered with the exchange rate, I suppose that would have been around 20 million US dollars. So you can see how this business has, has moved over the, over the 14 years. That's all good news. Except that on the 16th of March, um, our Prime Minister in the UK made a statement on TV. Tom was watching the TV and the statement said to everyone in the United Kingdom, please don't go to any restaurants, please don't go to any bars, please don't go to any theatres, please don't go to any sporting events. And if you're thinking of going to the airport to go on holiday somewhere, please don't do that either. And Tom said, well, he looked at it. He looked at that uh, television statement and he said, well, I'm screwed. 
that's my business screwed. And he had this statement, you know, that has remained with me actually. Um, and he's, you know, cause I, I said, Tom, you know, uh, you know, the, his reaction to shock, the very first part of the transition curve here, he said, it's taken 14 years to make my business and it'll probably take 14 days to break it. And I thought that was really, just think of that. Just think of what was going through his mind because he had goals. He was planning to build this business. He was going to sell the business um, because he'd worked solidly for all those years. And now those dreams were absolutely in tatters. Um, and so, um, and so what started as a shock, it, What's part of this particular model, it starts as a shock, but you can see there's, there's a very quick bounce back. And anybody that's been through transitions will know that this happens. There's almost this disbelief. It's almost, well, that can't be true. The prime minister has obviously got this wrong. He's talking to other people. It's not about me. So you get this kind of, um, you know, you get this kind of in, increase in your morale and in, uh, you know, all based on disbelief. But then it starts to become real. And as you come through and down the transitions curve, as happened to Tom, um, there was another announcement one week later, March the 23rd. And this really was reality because on March the 23rd, the prime minister said, we are now going into lockdown. And lockdown meant you have to stay at home. Um, and um, and particular rules about who you could connect with and who you who you couldn't and you could only go to work if it was vital you could only go to the shops to buy food or you could only go to the chemist to get medicine and you were in lockdown as most of the world has been and so that really was the reality and you can see that Tom's really going down and down this curve and um, and so, you know, he's, he's uh, the depression and the frustration and the anger. Um, and it really gets to a point. It gets to a point um, right at the bottom here where he has to make a decision, which isn't there in the first day or so, but he has to make a decision of, am I going to break or am I going to make it? Am I going to build this business back again? And with his mentor, who asked that question, he said, I've built this business once, I'm gonna build it again. And then he started to move from being in a, um, a reactive situation to wanting to take back control. And with his mentor, started to think about reimagining the future, started to think about, um, about some of the things that he might be able to do. And from that, um, uh, you know, the, um, uh, starting to, to experiment, and he started to move, for example, his pies, you know, very quickly, he moved that to an online business. Um, and within one month, you know, from taking telephone orders and commercial sales, the pies themselves were online for any consumer in the UK to, um, you know, to, to put an order in and have that delivered in a box to your home. And so that was part of, of moving on, albeit that the business right now is probably less than one tenth of it, uh, of that, of that business, uh, uh, of this, of, of this last month of May compared to May last year. So it's small, very, very small beginnings. Okay. So that I think tells us a little bit about, um, uh, about where Tom is in terms of, um, uh, his story and and how the transition curve applied, and we can apply this, I think, to many, many, many businesses um, that are facing uh, a crisis and uncertainty in their businesses. And I think it's a really good um, uh, model for mentors to have at the back of their mind, and when they're working with their mentees, you know, to really, you know, to to draw it to you know, to present this and, you know, so that the mentee can see for themselves, you know, where are they at any particular point? And I think that helps both mentor and mentee be on the same page together. And then with better understanding, you're able to, um, you know, you're able to help. Okay, I think we better look at the next slide, Jörg. Uh, how we, and how are we doing time-wise?
we, um, I think we're good. Yeah, we're the, okay. Yeah. I just would like to add one thing. Mm -hmm. So what, this model, um, if you, the way you explained it, it seems to be more like a straight trajectory. Is that mm -hmm. the case, John, or is it? <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, the, I mean, when, uh, as you get back through the break it or make it, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you start off with, with point one, you go through or all the way through two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to integration. You know, of course it doesn't mean that. You know, there are always events that are happening all the time. And because you're so fragile, it can knock you back. And I think mentors need to be aware that when you think you've got through it, something can knock you back. So you have to deal with that as well. So, um, so, you had, so I think if you think of it as a pendulum, that sometimes you're swinging to the right and, you know, but pendulums swing back again. And I think it's really important to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to you know, to, to accept that, that that can happen and not to keep forcing the issue forward when there are issues that need to be, um, uh, you know, that need to be managed, you know, if you have to swing back. The important point here is, is not to get stuck in the past, um, is not to be rooted, rooted in the past, but to look for opportunities to move forward. That's where mentors do their best work, is, is moving their mentees forward, not being rooted and stuck in the past. Okay, thanks, Jörg. Um, okay, so um, if we just to go back one sec, I'm just going to make one or two points actually on the previous yes. slide, and then we'll and then we'll get we'll have a That's breakout right. session. Yeah, I think the um, some of the points I would make here is that you can't skip the stages, but you can s speed them up. And we're going to have an exercise in a moment, you know, getting you to look at um, transitions that you've experienced. Um, it does start out of control and then you start to it, it's you know it, it's human nature we want to get we want to get control back um and having help from the mentor as you're going through the uh, through the change curve is is very important and it's also important to experiment and to and not just experiment but to act as well because the more that you're able to act you move away from paralysis and you know and paralysis the longer we're stuck there, the harder it is to, you know, to move forward and to, um, and, and to act. And we know this at the moment because we've been in lockdown for a couple of months and getting people back to work is, is, is a pretty tough thing at the moment. So the more you're in paralysis, the harder it is to move forward. Um, setting new goals is important as you, as you move forward and starting with small wins. So you don't have to work with the big stuff you can start with small wins and importantly mentors can help their mentees celebrate success small successes because we know that um, success breeds more success and and then i think as you come through the uh, change curve it's to start to review and reflect and to think well what has this journey really meant for me and if I have to go through transitions, which I will in the future, then what learning can I take with me? So that's just a few points I'd like to make, Jörg, as we prepare for the breakout. And over to you. Thank you. So I think we should, it, it's a webinar, right? So it shouldn't be just like kind of a lecture. So what we would like to do now is we would like to organize um, a breakout session, meaning we will be working in smaller groups. So there's um, what we're going to do is we will copy uh, we will copy the the exercise and um, the questions into the chat box. And if you go to the, um, you will be guided automatically into into smaller groups, into groups of five people. And if you open the chat box again, you will see the questions there again, so you don't really have to write them down. So a good tip is, um, in the beginning, find a facilitator and ask one person to take notes. So, and the questions um, we would like you to discuss in, the, in your group is, um, please describe your transition experience, your experience with change. And think about, think back a tiny little bit, what helped 
you to get through this transition, to make that change. And the last question is, what's your takeaway from that experience? What did you learn? And it would be great if you could share um, like one idea um, from, from your group um, afterwards in a, in a feedback. So I'm going to copy the questions into the chat box and Hagit will guide you um, or us um, into breakout sessions. שלום, שומעים אחד את השני? אתם יכולים להוריד את המיקרופונים עכשיו. שומעים. Uh, כולם פה מדברים עברית? Everybody speak Hebrew here? כן. אוקיי, okay. okay. אז אפשר בעברית? אפשר בעברית, כן. אני על תקן אורחת. נעים מאוד, מי שלא מכיר, מוניקה, מנכ"לית קרן שמש. Uh, הדיון הוא כולו שלכם. יש, uh, יש לכם את השאלה שהוא ביקש? לא. אם תלחצו על הצ'אט, אתם רואים שלמטה כתוב צ'אט? תלחצו על זה, תראו את זה בפנים. אני לחצתי על הצ'אט, אבל שום דבר לא מופיע לי. אז אני אקריא, אוקיי. הוא מבקש מאיתנו לחשוב על איזשהו טרנזישן גדול שהיה לנו בעבר, לתאר מה הייתה החוויה, איך עברנו אותה, איך הצלחנו לעבור אותה, ו... מה לקחנו מתוך הניסיון הזה. הפרזנטיישן, צריך להכין תשובה, צריך להציג את זה לכולם בדקה. טרנזישן שלנו או של... אחרי זה אנחנו חוזרים לכל המליאה, ואז כל אחד... אנחנו צריכים להציג איזושהי פרזנטציה שמספרת מהניסיון של כולנו איך, איך יצאנו מה... משבר או מה... המדיו טרנזישן. ניסיון שלנו או ניסיון של מישהו שאנחנו מלווים? אני חושבת, הוא מדבר עלינו, אז כן, אני מניחה שכן. מהניסיון שלנו. צ'יקו, אתה איתנו? אני לא יודע אם זה נשמע יומרני, אבל uh, במהלך הקריירה שלי עברתי הרבה טרנזישן, ו... אבל לא זכור לי כל השלבים האלה. כלומר, זכור לי השלב של, ה... של השוק באיזו תקופה של uh, תסכול גדול, אבל אחרי זה אני זוכר שמיד אחרי זה התחלתי לבדוק תוכניות לשינוי. פיטרו אותי כמה פעמים מהעבודה, שזה היה מאוד מתסכל, אבל לא, לא כל כך חוויתי את כל השלבים שהוא מדבר עליהם. אז... Mm-hmm. מוניקה? כן, כן. אהלן, מה נשמע? רשום פה גם. יואל, אבל אני ישראל, כי הבן שלי <laughs> היה בזום עכשיו, הוא העביר לי את המחשב. אני חושב לעסק, הדבר הכי חשוב זה ההחלטה, להחליט. או למכור, או להמשיך. בעל עסק חייב להחליט. אם הוא לא רווחי, הוא חייב לקום וללכת. אם הוא רווחי, אז הוא ממשיך לעבוד. ההחלטה של בעל העסק היא דבר הכי חשוב, אני חושב, בעסק. אני מסכים. <coughs> אני חושב אבל שכמו שיש לנו מדדי הצלחה, יש גם מדדי לא כישלון, אלא... עד כמה ומתי אנחנו נסבול מצב שהוא לא אידיאלי. ואז, מתי שמגיעים למצב הזה, אז מבחינה מושכלת, אני מאוד מסכים, צריך לקבל החלטה. והשלב הזה מגיע, מהניסיון הקצר שלי, ממש לפי המודל, יחד עם תקופה של שאננות, של דכדור, של עובדים שיותר מרכלים ופחות עובדים. זה, זה לאו דווקא מתואר בדיכאון קליני, אבל בהחלט באיזשהו אי-תפקוד וכל מיני סימפטומים שהם נלווים לכך. 
אני חושב בעסק, אם אתה לא מרוויח, אתה לא יכול להגיד, יהיה יותר טוב. אתה צריך לראות, אתה מרוויח, אתה ממשיך. לא מרוויח, להחליט וללכת הביתה. ככה אני למדתי מהניסיון שלי בחיים. אני חושבת שזה גם מאוד תלוי איפה העסק נמצא, באיזה שלב שהוא נמצא. כי אתה יכול לחוות דבר כזה גם כשאתה מתחיל משהו חדש. ואני לפחות יכולה להיזכר באיזו סיטואציה שחוויתי משהו חדש, והתקדם בהרבה מאוד מובנים לפי הספר, וה... ובעצם בסיכומו של דבר היינו צריכים לקבל החלטה, הייתי צריכה לקבל החלטה לסגור את זה, בגלל דברים שהם היו קשורים לרגולציה. אז, אז, וזה מאוד תלוי בשלבים, באיזה מין עסק אתה ובאיזה שלבים אתה נמצא מבחינת העסק. אם זה עסק חדש, אתה רק מתחיל אותו, זו סיטואציה אחרת מאשר עסק שהוא רץ, ואתה נקלע לאיזשהו משבר אקסוגני או, או פנימי. זה, שזה, זה יכול להיות בשני המובנים. אני מסכים איתך, עסק חדש הוא חייב להילחם, הוא חייב לנסות להצליח. אבל עסק קיים, שהוא נכנס להפסדים ומתחיל להלוות כסף מהבנקים, לא רואה שהוא יתרומם, הוא רק ילך וייפול. פה ההחלטה חייבת להיות חשובה. <אח> ההחלטה פה קריטית, להמשיך, להמשיך לעבוד או לסבול וללכת הביתה. יש גם אופציה לעשות, שברגע שמפסידים אולי לחשוב על תפנית או על שינוי האסטרטגיה של העסק, זה לראות מה יש לנו ואולי מה אפשר לעשות פיבוט לכיוון אחר. כשמפסידים, זה לא תמיד הפתרון המיידי. אני מסכים שזה מאוד מסוכן להמשיך ולהתחיל לקחת הלוואות וחובות, אבל כדאי תמיד לבדוק, איך מנצלים את מה שיש לנו, או לכיוון חדש, או להקים עסק אחר שיהיה, שינצל את מה שיש לנו. זאת אומרת, אני חושבת שאפשר גם להסתכל קודם פנימה, אומרת, קודם כל, לא, לא הכל שחור ולבן, זאת אומרת, זה, זה לא, לא תמיד אה, הפסד יכול להיות אה, רגעי, וכמו שצבי אמר, אם אני קצת עושה איזשהו שינוי בתוכנית, אני יכול למצוא את עצמי מרוויח אה, אם, אני, אם אני אעבוד נכון. אז השאלה באמת, צריך להסתכל על מה אני מפסידה, אם בגלל אסטרטגיה לא נכונה, אם אי קריאה נכונה של המצב כרגע, צריך להבין מאיפה בעצם ההפסד הזה נובע לפני שאנחנו עושים go, no go, יש פה הרבה הסתכלות מעמיקה פנימה. וגם צריך, אני חושבת, באמת את ההסתכלות החיצונית של מישהו ש... כי כשאתה נמצא בתוך עסק ואתה מעסיק אנשים, אתה צריך לפטר אותם. או אתה צריך לעשות התייעלות כלכלית ו... ולצמצם, אני חושבת שזה הרבה יותר קל כשיש מנטור, כשיש מישהו איתך שמסתכל מבחוץ ועוזר לך לעשות את הטרנזישן הזה. זאת אומרת, זה, זה מאוד לא פשוט לעשות את זה כשאתה בפנים. אבל אין ספק שצריכים גם לקבוע מדיניות, כמו ששמענו, שאם דברים לא עובדים, לסגור לפני שה... הנפילה נופחת, נהפכת לאסון קולוסאלי. תודה. אני די מסכים עם ישראל, אבל זה צריך להיות באיזה תהליך מובנה, ולהחליט מראש מתי מחליטים שזה לא עובד. נכון. כמו שאומרים, אסטרטגיית יציאה. כן, תודה. אבל צבי, אם אני... מתחברת למה שאתה אמרת, שצריך לחשוב על רעיונות אחרים, אז הסיטואציה שאני תיארתי בחלקה קודם, אז באמת מה שעשינו היה אסטרטגיה אחרת, ועברנו לייצור במקום אחר ולמכירה במקום אחר, והיה חבל מאוד שהעסק לא נבנה במדינת ישראל, אבל הוא נבנה בסוף. <laughs> דרך אגב, אני קצת עובד עם סטארט-אפים בהייטק, וזה מאוד מאוד אופייני להרבה מאוד סטארט-אפים שהם מגיעים לנקודה שפל מאוד עמוקה, 
ואז הם משנים לגמרי את הכיוון, עושים פיבוט לכיוון אחר, ולפעמים הפיבוט הזה יכול לקרות אפילו פעמיים או שלוש במהלכם של סטארט-אפים. וכמובן שבחלק גדול מהמקרים זה לא עוזר ובסוף סוגרים, אבל זה מאוד אופייני, בייחוד לסטארט-אפים בהייטק. להגיע לנקודה מאוד קשה, לראות שאין כסף, לראות שהדברים לא הולכים, מפסידים, ואז יושבים ופתאום משנים כיוון ב-90 מעלות, או אפילו ב- בכלל עוברים עם אותה, לתחום אחר לגמרי, עם אותו כוח אדם שישנו, אותו IP שקיים. אז אולי מה שצריך לקחת מהדבר הזה, זה באמת ה... מצד אחד היכולת לקבל החלטה, <אח> ומצד שני זה הנושא של גמישות במחשבה. נכון. ש... זה, זה מרכיב מאוד מאוד משמעותי, ואני חושבת שאחד הדברים שאני יכולה להעיד על עצמי מכמה סיטואציות שהייתי צריכה אה, לעבור, אז הנושא הזה של גמישות במחשבה זה אחד הדברים הכי... המת... אחת המתנות שקיבלתי מסיטואציות כאלה. כל מה שאנחנו אומרים זה טוב לגבינו, אבל אנחנו מנטורים ואנחנו מלווים יזמים. אני אף פעם לא אמרתי ליזם, לא כדאי לך, אתה הולך ליפול, אל תתקדם. אני יכול להגיד לו, לך שמאלה ימינה, אבל ההחלטה היא של היזם. אסור <אז> לנו... אסור לנו, איך אומרים, לתת לו הרגשה לא טובה, שהוא לא נכון, שהוא החליט לא נכון. ההחלטה היא שלא, אנחנו יכולים לרמוז לו, אבל אנחנו לא יכולים לדבר מה שאנחנו מדברים פה, להגיד את זה ליזם. זה דעתי. אני אף פעם לא אמרתי דברים שליליים ליזם, גם כשהבנתי שהוא הולך לעשות שטויות. אני מסכים מאוד, ואני חושב שמדובר, גם בהיבט החיובי, מדובר בתהליך הבשלה. והרבה פעמים, אגב, זה, זה נכון גם ליישוב סכסוכים. סכסוך לא התיישב אם הצדדים לא הבינו שאין להם טעם להמשיך באותו סכסוך. הם צריכים לעבור איזשהו תהליך של התבוננות פנימה, התבוננות החוצה אל המציאות והכרה שהאסטרטגיה היא פשוט לא עובדת. והמנורה הזאת ש... שנדלקת, היא דורשת uh, כמה דברים שיקרו. אחד מהם זה להרגיש את התחתית. כל, כל אחד עם המטאפורה שלו, מה, מה שהיה התחתית בשבילו. אחד זה... שהוא לא מצליח להוציא מזכורות בזמן, אחד זה שהוא רואה שעוד עשרה חודשים הוא לא יצליח להוציא מזכורות בזמן. כל אחד עם התחושה שלו, אבל הפיקחון, אני מאוד מזדהה עם המודל, ראיתי אותו גם, גם על עצמי, גם אצל מלווים שלי עכשיו, הפיקחון מגיע אחרי התבוננות מאוד מעמיקה פנימה, שהיא קשורה בחשבון נפש. ובהיבט הזה הדיכאון הוא דיכאון שהוא בריא, במיוחד אם ההחלטה היא שינוי אסטרטגיה, אם ההחלטה mm-hmm. היא להמשיך באותו אופן או להתבצר בדיכאון, אז יש פה בעיה שהיא לטיפולו של מישהו אחר, מה שנקרא. <laughs> אז בואו ננסה רגע לסגר, יש לנו בעצם דקה וחצי, ואחרי זה אנחנו צריכים להציג. אז מה, מה הכיוון שאתם חושבים שכדאי להציג לכולם? זאת אומרת, היו פה כמה גישות על השולחן. אני לוקח מאוד את הגישה החיובית של ישראל בתור מוטו. שלא משנה איפה נמצא התהליך, הגישה חייבת להיות חיובי, חיובית מצד המנטור. יש תפקידים שבהם זה, זה לאו דווקא נכון, אבל כל אחד לשיטתו בהיבט המנטורי, אני מסכים לגמרי. השיקוף תמיד צריך להיות חיובי, והשאלה אל המלווה תהיה, כן, אבל בוא תחשוב גם לאיזה מחיר אתה הולך לשלם, ואם הוא מודע למחיר, אז הבחירה היא שלו, והוא עומד מאחוריה, לטוב ולרע. Mm-hmm. אז אני מסכים לחלוטין עם ההיבט החיובי. אני חושב ש... 
שצריך לקחת את שני המימדים, גם של ההתבוננות פנימה החוצה וגם של הראייה החיובית. אם יזם בא עם חזון, אסור לנו לתקוע גלג... מוטות בחזון שלו. Mm-hmm. הוא צריך ללכת עם החזון שלו, רק הוא צריך לבחור יעדים, יעדי ביניים שיעזרו לו להגיע לחזון. הוא לא יכול להתאבד על החזון. הוא חייב ללכת לאט לאט. לראות איך הוא מתקדם לחזון, ויכול להיות שיצליח, יכול להיות שהוא לא יצליח. Mm-hmm. אבל אסור לנו אה, לבטל את החזון של היזם. Mm-hmm. אז זהו, אז עוד אה, כמה ש... שניות ייסגר אה, החדר. אה, יונתן, אתה... מישהו רוצה להציג זאת, את, ה... את הסיכום שלנו? ישראל, יונתן, עמית, עמית פה? תשתקת את עצמך. כן. מה? אני לא מתלהב מהרעיון, אבל אני... צריך לתת דקה של הצגה. אני מקבל את עצמי על הדין אם אין מתנדבים אחרים. טוב, מקסימום... תעזרו לי. נעזור לך בדיוק, נירתם כולנו. טוב, אז היה לי נורא כיף לשמוע אתכם, חבל שלא הספיק יותר הזמן, אני בטוחה שהיה לכם עוד הרבה מה להוסיף. כן, רק אונליין, אימוני כושר אונליין, הרצאות אונליין, ומצד אחד זה גם חשוב, אני בעצמי עושה עם... אבל מצד שני, קצת נעלם כל העניין של לעבוד ביחד. נכון, אז גם כל אחד שיושב בבית יכול לדאוג לבד לבריאות שלו. כן, יש פה כל מיני אובסטקורס, יש פה גם את העניין של לפעמים אנשים שעובדים מהבית, my self included, כמו שאומרים, קצת לא מצליחים לעשות את ההבדל. סליחה, our friends are already on and I suggest we speak in English. Yeah, I think we are all back. אוקיי. הלו. Sorry, so, sorry for the Hebrew. Oh, no worries. You're welcome. The, sorry, the, my language skills are, like, really limited. The, so. yeah, it's, it's very strange uh, not knowing Hebrew. Very strange. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we probably need another session, like a training session, like Hebrew in 90 minutes. Is there a way to do that? It goes in tears. Uh, it's you know easy. The, it's you know easy, the, you know. Babies, babies here talk Hebrew. It's very easy. Exactly what <laughs> yes, I wanted I, to say. Exactly. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's see how that goes. <laughs> Not babies, every baby. <laughs> uh, which makes, oh, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I would like to have some feedback from, from the groups. Only, only if you want to share. The, um, and I would like to focus on the last two questions. What really helped you get through this phase of transition, this phase of change? Anyone who would like to volunteer? Okay, I'm, I'm, no problem. I'm willing to, to start here. <laughs> to start. Yeah, thank you. And I'll go to the, to the final question, what helped? And my conclusion at the time was, and this was a decision to take advice. And I spoke to some friends, I spoke to some people that I really appreciated, shared with them the difficulties, shared with them the problems, if you want to call it, or the questions that they had, in order, I had to change route, and I'm not going to the whole story. So sharing, my, my conclusion is to speak with people because you hear a lot of things. And uh, as I said in the sessions there, uh, I like it very much, a sentence that says, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine, when, you, I... when you talk with people, you get to know that there is so much you don't know. Okay. I just like to 
reinforce what Moshe said. I view it as one of the most important part in the time of crisis is to really consult with everybody around you and be open to hear uh, other perspective and especially criticism. And the real secret to, in that process is to pay attention to comments that really irritate you. Those are the real comments that uh, you should, that I, sh I pay attention to. So. I, I, I may share with you uh, something from uh, our group. We were number six there. And I'll speak for uh, Boaz. He told us uh, that he's in, in a transition uh, stage. Uh, he worked with, for a company, but uh, uh, personally had to be abroad many times, which didn't help him in his work. So he decided uh, to stop working there. And this is uh, his transition uh, phase. And uh, he, he uh, 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 decided to invest in uh, learning, in e-learning, and uh, decided that one of the things that will help him in the new world was getting more into the LinkedIn uh, net. Uh, so he's now taking courses about LinkedIn. Uh, and he is in the transition, but already he's feeling that he's getting uh, into the uh, better side of the graph, uh, meaning that he's getting more familiar with the LinkedIn net. His profile is much better and he believes that very soon he would uh, be able to monetize the new things that he uh, learned. And he highly believes in learning and also uh, uh, gives this to uh, the mentee that he's working with to take this time uh, to study and, and get better with uh, your own uh, knowledge. I would like uh, to add from uh, our group, uh, which I don't know the number of the group, <laughs> probably one. Um, I think the, the most important things in this is, and I would like to add only to other people's uh, minds, um, that there's a need for change. The need for change, to explain the need for change. You cannot, Freud always said that, you cannot do the same thing and expect to, to get a better result, okay? You need to change. And the need, the need to change, this is something we should discuss always with our uh, 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 people who are, who are uh, redirecting to the, 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 that there, there is a need for change. And from them, when they are convinced, then it's more easier to do. The other learnings that we are uh, presenting is to use the, the, all the resources that we have. And resources is, are not always our uh, paid resources. We can use the community, we can use friends. In our case, we use the children of, uh, uh, of uh, our community which are there are more technology experience and they have something which we are in our age, we don't have. So that was our learning. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share something or should, I, should we continue? Well, I would just add something uh, that uh, there, what I was impressed with uh, amongst the three people that I've been mentoring, uh, um, two of the three really were dead in the water during this period of time because of what they do. And they showed an amazing amount of resilience, um, you know, shifting to doing marketing because there was just no way they could do anything or pivot to any kind of actual revenue activity. And they really, uh, and I think as a mentor, I think it's just important to support that kind of um, mentality, 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 you know, that, uh, um, you know, that when, when there really isn't what you can do, then you just, you know, suck it up and, and do the best you can do um, with what you have and to try to be creative uh, and supporting that kind of activity. Yeah. 
This is Yuval. This is Yuval. Uh, I just want to describe what we did in our group. Uh, 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 unfortunately, we, we ran, off, ran out of time and we didn't uh, have enough time to, to jump into the two very important questions. But we did talk about the transitions at one of the interpreters that, uh, that worked with one of the consulting in Karen Shemesh. And we talked about the change uh, that he made and the uh, what, what, what I understood that was uh, very important uh, for, for, for us to learn as a mentors is to let the, the, the interpreters to lead the process, to give him direction, to give his leads, to, to give him consultancy, but not to, give, not to give him what he should do, just to raise uh, the problem and what has to be changed or what we think that has to be changed and to give him the opportunity to change it. There, there, there was two, two big issues with, uh, with, uh, in, in this case. One of the issues was that she paid the uh, uh, high uh, rental fee for the, for the store that he rented in order to sell their product. And the other problem was uh, that he didn't focus in one, uh, one product in her shop. And uh, the shop has everything from, uh, from, uh, from ice cream to, to gifts and uh, and, uh, and, and other things, and he didn't focus, although it was a, 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 a small a, a neighborhood a, a shop, but, uh, but people lost, uh, lost uh, the, the focus and they didn't uh, find what they are looking for. So what, uh, at the end, what, uh, what, uh, what happened, that first she moved to, to cheaper uh, store, and second she focused on, uh, on the bakery uh, 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 stuff, both on cake, and, and, and other bakery uh, product that he sold, and, and also a, a, a tool uh, uh, to make it uh, by themselves to the customers to make by themselves at home. And this uh, drive uh, a lot of revenue, and, uh, and uh, she managed uh, to have a very nice uh, business just before the corona crisis. And uh, so, so it was a very, very nice lesson to hear from, uh, from the, from the uh, mentors. Thank you very much for sharing that. <clears throat> I have also a few words, if I may. Why don't you? I'll try. <laughs> uh, we, we had a, a bit of a, a debate, what, what is the most important aspect uh, regarding the transition? And eventually we kind of agreed that uh, both uh, are important. So the first was to be uh, uh, positive about the situation, whatever it is, as an entrepreneur and uh, as is a mentor. And uh, to be firm about uh, the smart goals that one puts to, uh, to achieve his, uh, his vision. Uh, the second aspect was to uh, really get deep to the insight when things are not according to, uh, to plan and to use the so-called depression phase uh, into learning and uh, understanding before the next one, which is to take the decision. So this, uh, we realized that this is a very important uh, uh, phase and uh, actually to be a bit uh, down and uh, to look uh, um, to the inner circle is actually a good thing uh, because it's an, uh, an uh, opportunity to gain um, uh, inner strength for the next to come. Uh, so those were the two uh, major aspects uh, we talked about. Thank you very much. Cheers. So w one of the things um, we, we, we noticed in uh, working with entrepreneurs from, from different countries and the feedback we received is that first of all, it's absolutely normal that when you're kind of in a, in a shock or like really surprised at what's going on and you can't really grasp that, um, then the, it's normal to be slow. It's normal not to be able to make good decisions. But the, the thing which really helps moving from the left-hand side more the you know the the, the, the shock the, the frustration the anger um, to um, and using this energy and and channel that into into a kind of meaningful purposeful activity 
the that really comes by having the feeling okay i'm back in control the and how to support your mentor getting um, or creating this feeling or being able to feel again that you're back in control that is something john will tell us in a minute john over to you John, are you still with us? Are you on mute? How's that? Can you hear me, Jörg? No, I can hear you. Great, okay. Jörg, I don't know about you, but I thought there was some really good, uh, some great ideas there, some really good feedback. Um, and one of the things I'd learned, of course, uh, was the how important um, history and culture is. Um, and I'm really glad that people tuned into the Transitions Curve. And, Certainly in the group that I was, I was with, um, you know, the idea of resilience uh, is born out of the history of, of, of you know, being, um, uh, being an Israeli and all the things that have happened over the years. And um, so that just kind of, kind of goes with the territory. And, you know, that's something we don't normally think, sometimes we don't think about that in our own circumstance. Um, but I thought that was, that was very, very powerful. Um, and, you know, some of the other things that were really powerful as well, it was the idea that, you know, there are winners and losers in transitions. And, um, and so even though your, you know, you, your business might be in, you know, kind of it trampled in the dust, um, uh, there are also some, uh, some challenges with being the winner. And one of the examples was that all of a sudden, somebody with a digital business, they've got too many customers. And so now they're thinking, my goodness, that wasn't in my business plan. I've got to recruit people. And now I've got to deal with the fact I've got too many customers. So, you know, some really interesting stuff that came out. Um, but whenever entrepreneurs go through crisis and stress, um, then this particular model, controlling the controllables, which, which, which actually comes from some work from, um, uh, from Stephen Covey, who many people will know, many of you will know that he wrote a book in 89 called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And he wanted to separate, um, you know, those areas of concern from the things that you can control, things that you can influence. Um, and, um, um, and it's important to separate these things. And if we look at the next slide, Jörg, we can see how this is applied. So, Back to Tom's story, you know, when we asked Tom to go through this exercise, or his mentor did, you know, these are just some examples of all the different, um, different issues uh, or challenges that, um, I think probably more issues actually, more random thoughts, some things um, he could do something about, some things were, you know, were anger and, and, uh, and, um, you know, where, where he was pointing the finger and saying, well, you know, it's the government. If it wasn't for them, I'd be okay. They've caused all of this. Um, and so at this point, it's really putting all of the ideas. And the way we do this is to write one idea on a post-it note, on a big, so in a big circle, on a piece of paper. And you can do this virtually, actually, as a mentor. And just put them all in this big circle in a random way. And if we look at the next slide, Jörg, um, this is about separating them into the things you can control and, the, and the, those you can influence. And this is really where the, the mentor is really helping and earning their corn as the mentor, uh, working hard. Uh, number one, making sure that all the issues are, are out of the mentee system. So the previous circle, you know, keep asking that question. Have you written down all the issues? Are there any more? And just keep repeating that until they're all exhausted. And then to start to separate them into what you can control and, um, and what you can influence, and then leaving those bits outside the circle that you have no control over at all. And so, for example, you know, in the, um, in the center, what, you can, what Tom did, unused stock, he found that he had uh, cancelled orders. So all of a sudden, he's got unused stock in his in his uh, um, in in his uh, in his refrigerators. And so, what did he do? He called up the customers. 
he called up as many as he could and he emailed them and said i've got this stock would you like to buy some and then he was doing deals to sell stock that he's got bringing cash into the business so that's something that he could control um second in terms of things he could influence um you know cash will run out in three months the bank's not being supportive we all know that cash is king and you know and there was one story where tom rang up one of his um, one of his uh, one of his creditors and said you know uh you, you haven't paid your bill and that company said well actually tom um the reason i'm not paying you is that our client has not paid us so i can't pay you because i've not been paid so tom said well you know um rather than go through the legal channels and send you a, a, a letter from my lawyer you know i don't want to do that is there anyone i can speak to so he spoke to the finance director and the finance director said look tom we're taking a, a hit here um and um and so they came to an agreement that they would take uh 50 each so the client that you know the the, the client that owed tom's clients um the funds they weren't going to pay any of that at all so tom and his immediate client they took a 50 percent hit each so that was something he could influence by getting on the phone talking to the to the finance director and at the outer outer circle you know we're left with something of when will it all end well who knows when it will all end none of us have the answer there and so what do you do well one way you can do it is to get Tom to pick up that post-it note, screw it up and throw it in the waste bin. Don't focus on that anymore because you can't do anything about it. The important thing, I think, when you've gone through this part of the exercise is then to create an action plan and actually do something. Jörg, over to you. Thank you, John. The, so what, I, uh, what we did here is uh, we created uh, the something like okay something i can control is actually actionable so let's create an action so let's either try to find work for employees or try to find a support scheme from the government or whatever is available to address that issue the okay we have unused stocks so let's make use of that so the when we um when we con try to trans transform the concerns into something I can control. If I can control and if I can influence that, then let's do it. It's important and I think a mentor is really helpful in this stage when it comes to setting priorities. So what should be addressed first, what's second, what's third? Like really focusing on that. And um, what I really liked is the whatever we're going to do is based on what we have. It's based on what we know. The really these effectuation principles, um, which were described a couple of minutes ago, the this is really what helps me like communicate, talk to other people. These are the right next steps. Are there any questions so far? Yeah, can I just make one quick point here? Yes, and this please, is do. And just do bear in mind that, you know, the, this list, the ABC list was, is very much Tom's list here. And it's, it's very much um, uh, facilitated by the mentor. The mentor is not making the decision for the mentee, which was one of the points that, you know, that we had from the feedback earlier. Um, and so different mentees will have different lists, but it's really, uh, you know, based on their experience, based on the, you know, on, on the circumstances that they're facing. So it's really important to take, you know, that they are able to work out for themselves with your help, what they can control, what they can influence and things that are totally out of control. And as we said here, and it's addressing those, um, you know, that, that, that even those that can't be controlled is to address them adequately. Thanks, Joe. Um, thanks for adding that. And one more thing, and let me go quickly go back so there's one one top tip um, if any name like a name of a real person shows up on one of those um, post-it notes just make sure it never ends in the outer circle mm. 
the um, because we really don't want to get like John suggested um, and throw it in the bin, right? We don't do that with persons, never, ever. The and nowhere in the world that's acceptable. So um, if you have that, really try to rephrase that. But it's never there should never be a, a name of a real person on 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 it, other than okay. Uh, let's say there's uh, my wife's name um, on that list and it's like, okay, she's really concerned. I really need to talk to her. I need to talk to her more often. So that's okay in, in that sense. But it should never ever be like just a concern and we push that um, away from us. Just wanted to add that. So we're in it together. Uh, now for um, a little bit over an hour. The, can I ask you, um, should we have a, a small break, two minutes, some fresh air, glass of water, or should we continue? On my side, you can continue. I suggest we continue. Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy way out. <laughs> Let's continue. If, you, if you want a glass okay. of water, go ahead. Go no, for I'm it. Oh, really? go. I'm okay. Let's let's crack on then, Jörg. Then we crack it's on. It's possible at the end just to go back to the groups because we didn't really finish what we needed to finish. If there's a possibility of that at the end, I'd be very grateful. Absolutely, we can do that. Yes? Thanks. So, the pretty much at the beginning, uh, when the COVID crisis became really big, um, one of our member CEOs uh, wrote a checklist and I still find this a very good guideline for any mentoring conversation, not only during this COVID crisis, but also afterwards. So and let me briefly highlight a few things. Um, the, first, the first topic should always be health and safety first above anything else. So even if your, your mentee is working really hard and you have the feeling your mentee is working too hard and should probably um, do something else like recreational, I remember a conversation with my mentor. John used to be my mentor, by the way. And he was very good at picking on that. And then like, you're, you look tired. The, are you cycling? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and really spotting that. And it's, I think it's really okay to identify that uh, in the beginning. And really helps um, in, in improving the relationship between mentee and mentor, doesn't it? The, the other thing, and I'm very happy that you, that you already said that, is communicate, communicate, communicate. The, the more you speak to people, the easier it is to find new solutions, develop alternative business models, new business models, find new business partners. Um, you will find, like, if, if you talk to one of your, your customers, um, and one of my mentees um, actually did that, and um, she just called the customer, not like, do you have work for me, but really, how can I help? I know this is a difficult situation, how can I help? And it really created something very special the, because the customer uh, wasn't really expecting that, right? The, so encourage people to make these phone calls, reach out via different channels. The, it doesn't have to be complicated, like use what you have. You have the internet, then try to find people on LinkedIn, on Facebook, wherever you go. The social media, um, check your email, um, like how many people haven't I spoken to in the last three months? So send them an email, pick up the phone, try to speak to them, the more the better. When it comes to assessing liquidity, um, my suggestion is here, start short. Like really just look at it three months, six months. If we need a new strategy, we only work with what we have. Not, we are not waiting for the bank to approve a loan. It's really with what we have. Um, I created some templates and some questions around that. Hagit will share that with you after the webinar. And please use it if you find it useful. And it's really very straightforward, um, not too much detail. 
And especially in times of uncertainty, I find the effectuation principles extremely useful. When we're doing business planning, we assume we can predict the future. So if I'm a supermarket, I can predict how many liters of milk I will sell on a Friday afternoon or on a Saturday or on a Sunday, any given day, my supermarket is open. But the, um, in a time like this, I really don't know and I can't predict the future. So and that needs a slightly different strategy and that's very well described in the effectuation principles. The document I will share with you, you will find links to YouTube and a bit more um, explanation around that if you're not already very familiar with that. Um, that would be it from um, pretty much from my side. John, do, would you like to, to add something? Happy for us to carry on and move into the next exercise, Jörg. Okay, let's do that. So now let's make it real. The, um, I'm very happy to have Anat here, um, an entrepreneur from Israel. Well, some of you already spoke to her <laughs> in the previous breakout session. Um, now let's do that. Um, let's do that officially. Um, Anat, are you here? Yes, I'm here and happy to be here. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your business and what you're doing? Yes, um, I would actually love to demonstrate it. And if anyone, everyone can just stand for a minute, is it possible? Yeah, I think that's doable. Good. Let's all stand. So let's take our shoulders to the back a little bit. Oh, yeah. And breathe. And then take it to the front. And just jump around a little bit, like the song. <laughs> John, are we dancing? That's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. So before, uh, you mentioned that you were thinking of taking a break. So this was kind of like an active break. So this was a demonstration of something that I do in my business. Um, I have a business for corporate wellness which means incorporating healthy habits into the organization and into the workday. Um, a little bit about myself and a few words. I have an MBA in healthcare management from San Diego and I'm a certified health coach. So I coach people to better health. And um, I was working in uh, San Diego, California with uh, American corporations and organizations and I got to see the um, standard average American lifestyle in the, in, at work. And it's very, as we all know, very unhealthy. We're surround, they are surrounded with the unhealthy environment, um, a lot of unhealthy food, sedentary lifestyle, which today is considered to be the new tobacco, um, which have a lot of health concerns. So I just realized that health and wellness has become kind of a chore instead of being something very natural. So I said, why not add the health and wellness into the workday, which is where we spent most of our days. Um, I brought my business back when I was in San Diego. I was working with corporations such as uh, CBRE, um, Wells Fargo Bank, the Israeli American Council and such. And I decided to bring it back to Israel because I saw that this uh, field is not highly developed here like it is over there. Um, which is good, but it's also a, a challenge because I need to educate, uh, I, I strive to educate the market in that sense. Now in Israel, I used to give more um, physical, uh, frontal uh, experiences such as healthy hour for WeWork members. So I was working up until the coronavirus hit, I was working with four branches of uh, WeWork here in Israel. Um, when I say healthy hour, it uh, means that I brought a, a kind of a light talk about health and wellness topics such as you're not sick, you're thirsty, um, or the blood type diet, or many various subjects. Also, I brought healthier food and refreshments. Um, we brought these kind of active breaks um, just to help people help, have their health back on track um, and not have it taken so much time out of your workday. So and how has this COVID crisis affected your business? So that's a good question because one of my major uh, ideas was to bring something called head of wellness into the workplace, which means creating a new role. 
a new position of having someone in charge of the employee's health and wellness, which is not only the concern of the employee, but it's also a financial concern for the employer. Um, you know, more sick days, absentees and presentees and higher turnover and such. Um, but for me, it was a challenge because first of all, uh, the work-life balance has become even worse now that people work from home and they have their kids at home. Um, and also it was hard to maybe establish a new role position, which is very common, like in the United States, there's wellness coordinator in many establishments. However, here I heard that there were so many cutbacks in so many companies that there was no, not even such a thing of like creating a new role or position, even though, as we said, health and safety is first above all else. Um, so for me, that's a challenge of how to bring this new role that I was planning on bringing, uh, even with those cutbacks. Um, also, when it just hit the COVID-19, I saw that so many people like me in the health and wellness business, um, they bring free uh, services and materials or very, very, very low prices, which I couldn't compete with and of course was not profitable for myself. Um, and last, and for, um, last, I guess, um, that during the COVID-19, these uh, activities were very, I think, saturated. It was a very saturated field. Many um, webinars, maybe many um, Zoom workouts. Uh, everybody is, of course, lowering the prices. So on one hand is how do I bring it back to the new uh, workplace environment? And settings and second is how do I um, how do I compete with other vendors who give very very low prices because of the situation okay so the one of your biggest challenges really is the pricing um, of the competition mm -hmm. and how to bring it back to kind of a normal level so that your business is sustainable so that about correct yeah, and uh, one last thing is, um, if we all know that having someone who's in charge of your employee's health and wellness is super important, but with all the setbacks, how is it even possible in these days? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a group of um, 50 mentors here <laughs> the, who are very willing to support you, I assume. So why don't we ask them what they think? Should we do that? I would love to. Okay. So, mentors, step up, please. So, what would you suggest? What, how would you conduct the conversation? I love to challenge people. <laughs> I'm very good at not speaking and just let the questions sink in. The <laughs> Who would like to go first? I think it's quiet. I'll be honest. I think it's quiet here because I personally don't really... What's the question? How do we bring back um, the prices? How do we deal with competitors who are delivering pretty similar comparable services um, at a price tag which is just not sustainable? Well, first of all, you have to find what's so special about yourself. Uh, if I say it in Hebrew, excuse me, Hebrew from Mame Vadelotak. What's unique? Um, and this is something you have to develop your marketing based on what's unique, what's special about about you, about the service you give, and because people buy value and they're willing to pay for value. And if you show them the value that others don't show or an extra value, that's where you can meet the prices that you want to sell for. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an end of speech, but uh, in short, yeah, find yeah. what's special about you. Mm -hmm. I, I may add something. Yeah, uh, please maybe, do. Maybe, maybe look again at the business model. Maybe the way of making money should be different. 
or uh, so I, I would I would look at uh, new business models, new ways to connect to the new customers, uh, uh, trying to open the mind uh, maybe for something different because you have a very good thing with you and if the question is what is what the, what makes it difficult for the customers uh, to receive that uh, uh, what what you have and maybe then you may find a new business model I know. I don't think that uh, the, it's an issue of a business model. You have to try to find a way to differentiate yourself uh, even in one point. You know, when you have a wall in front of you, you should have only one soft point where you can break through. Yeah. And uh, if you can list all the virtues that you have and try to compare it to what there is in the market and find one point where you can have an added value, from there you can go through. Uh, you, I don't think you should change all your business model. Find one point that you can have an added value and start. I would, also, I would also add that you really need to push yourself into the need to have as opposed to nice to have sector, meaning that, there, that what you are offering is something that is absolutely fundamentally important to businesses right now, to both employees and to, and to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, the business uh, as a whole, and that this is not something that any business can do without right now. I mean, but you have to position yourself as being, a, as, as was said, differentiating yourself from whoever else is providing a similar type service so that you're the one that they're going to use. But first and foremost, to, to emphasize the need to have aspect of this business. I'd like I, to I, add, also I, add, I, I would like to add one more thing. Uh, package it with something that the competitors doesn't have. So add something else into to your uh, services and then you will be more unique and they uh, cannot compare your prices uh, versus to your competitors. I'd like to add something. Yep, please um, go. I think uh, people already said it, but I think you have to be creative, which means maybe to revisit uh, your own approach. Maybe you have to go into more educating uh, rather than selling, because right now I don't know who is listening, who is, is prepared and ready and has the money to get your straight services. So rather uh, having a course on that at, uni uh, at the university or at other uh, institutions about the trends, and from that to start the game, uh, changing your sectors, not thinking about companies or WeWorks or whatever, but Rather places where that are open and are willing to listen and to participate. Hi, Anav. I understood. In if I understood you correctly, your issue is not to open new ideas, new customers, and you don't have the time to develop and to feature your product differently from other competitors. And from my understanding, you are in the situation of negotiation because the selling process is over. And my question, if do you think that the price is the only issue or the only variable in the process how to communicate the issue to the existing customer? So the question is that maybe it's not the price is the only issue, but something else? Is that your I'm question? I'm sure that the price is not an issue because it was good in the past, so he should be good now. So we are not dealing about selling and not about a price, which is only one single variable in the negotiation or the other uh, variables that you have to introduce to the existing customers and new customers. Because the issue here is not selling, is how to communicate constructively the issue to the existing 
or the new optional customers and how to approach them because the price is not the issue is how to communicate your difficulties the situation in the market with them and how to do the crm in a proper way to continue to continue and to keep the the pipe alive mm -hmm. what do you think i have a i have a question isn't the COVID-19 is an advantage to you? Can't you, isn't it that the services are more needed by the companies now, their employees are so stressed, and that's the way to elevate the stress? Uh, and maybe you should market it as a necessity right now, and I would change it even that the objective of your company is to elevate, uh, you know, solve the problem created by COVID-19. I don't know, this could be one approach. Mm -hmm. I actually take all of the things that were said here, if that's okay, um, and making it from a nice to have to a need to have, I think sums it up just to show the value of it and to show even not just the financial value of it, but also the human value of it in regards to the employees. I want to add something. Yes, uh, I know it's easier said than done, but you here in Israel, you should expose yourself by the media. I saw many uh, people like you that um, show or visited the morning shows or other shows Sometimes, look at all the celebs that came out of the reality programs. Uh, because you're um, showing some things that are a little bit different. So people would like to hear about it. And uh, you can expose yourself to many, many people through these uh, TV uh, programs. Mm -hmm. That's true. And this is what my mentor is working with me on. This about mm -hmm. one more thing I would like it's it's more a question and I want you to think about that do you think it's possible that you can call up your previous customers and just ask them why they hired you in the first place I think that's a really good idea um, and perhaps just do my market research with my previous customers and see Best place to start is the customer. Yes, but add to it. Yes, but add to it. And one, don't you hire me again. <laughs> <laughs> don't make it a sales enough, call. Enough, if you need to that. Enough, yeah. enough, Challenge like them. To, Challenge like, them. <laughs> enough, I would like to add uh, another idea. Uh, try to get the management team into a free lesson or a free uh, a session with you so they can understand it and then they can mark it among their uh, employees because each management team has a many employees under him and he can actually take it uh, uh, with him uh, the other thing in COVID-19 I would even take the community around where you work where you live and do something like that because people in this time uh, participate in Zoom meeting and in, in uh, online meeting, but they need some social connection. And, uh, if you, and if you get them to the local little garden around your house and do like an exercise with them and then tell them, please, uh, uh, try to uh, 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 communicate this idea into your uh, 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 co companies. That will be a great, a great idea for you. Thank you. It's a great idea. All of it is a great idea. A lot of good material. Thank you very much for and making the time so and being with us. The I think time is running, and um, I received a signal signal from Hagit to wrap it up today the um, well I'll, I'll be happy to stay in this call for quite a bit if if you like but in order to wrap it up um, we have prepared um, a little yeah a little bit of kind of a summary and I'd like to call it John's 100 years of mentoring experience in one minute 
the um, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Over to you. Thank you. Um, okay. First of all, some great ideas. So, um, uh, so that was to uh, Inav. I hope that there were some really good ideas there. Um, from Tom's story earlier, uh, I've taken some ideas away that um, that came from you know from all the experience of of, of our mentors here. So um, we've been looking today at you know this whole issue of managing uncertainty brought about by COVID, um, and I think the first thing that I would say is 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 try to get your mentee to pay attention to the present, even if it's unpleasant. Uh, hold up the mirror. This is what I'm seeing. You know, what do you see? And and I think until the acceptance is there, it's very difficult to move forward. Um, I think the second point is is um, is that change can be stressful. I think we've all experienced that change is stressful, takes us out of our comfort zones, and um, and so therefore, to help to deal with those with any negative thinking and harmful stress that's associated um, with uh, life-changing events where your business has fallen off the edge of the cliff. Um, one of the things I think is to say to the mentee, um, don't keep beating yourself up. It's okay to be kind to yourself. You know, think about the things that you've done well. Think about your, you know, uh, what has got you to where you are and, uh, and be kind to yourself because it's really hard out there for, for many of the businesses. And the last point here is, um, is you know, when you're, when you're kicking off again, when you're restarting, you know, it's pointless just sticking rigidly to a five-year plan. You know, that's so unpredictable. It's so uncontrollable. It's really scary. What you can do is to refocus on getting restarted on the small things and rebuilding um, morale and confidence and i think that you know one thing i would say about um uh, tom's story here um is um and it really came out of some of the uh, some of the tips from from the from the mentors is that he also has to restart his business um and he also has to you for you look for a, a usp and it's really interesting actually that one of the things that he's looking to do um as he's USP in a very competitive market is to put pounds in the pocket of the consumer, not in the packaging. So he's created some great packaging, but to put pounds in the pocket, not in the packaging. And I think there are some great ideas, and I'll certainly take that back to Tom as well. So thanks everyone for taking part. Back to you, Jörg. An hour and a half seems to have gone in a flash. It really has. It seems to me like a little bit too short, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So, so can, is there any way we can get the slides, please, by email? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. I will uh, share the slides um, directly after the meeting with Hagid, and she will happily share the slides with you. So, you. also, if you have a question, um, if uh, please let us know how we can support you further. This is this is what John and I do. This is what we love to do. Um, and if there's anything, please let us know. Um, if you have a feedback, please share with us. We are always looking for improving and getting better. And we're doing this for you. So thank you very much for having us today. Um, over to you, Hagit. So, Mickey, get the yes, So Thank you so much, Jorg and John, really, for the preparation and for having this session to all of our community. I know that lots of mentors that couldn't make it for today are gonna have the recording of the session. And um, of course, feedbacks will flow from me to you if I'll have any. And to you all coming here, thank you very much. And enough, thank you for joining as well. I'll send everybody the recording and the materials that you all shared with me and you'll have it in your mails um, in a day or two. So um, thank you everybody. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and Jorg and John. Thank you. Thank you. It was really interesting and uh, a lot of learning. Oh, and I forgot to thank Boris. 
and Pamela and Therese and, the, and all the participants from, uh, from the different countries. So thank you very much for being here. Thank Therese, you. toda raba. Can, uh, can we go back to meet the groups uh, again before we leave? The, um, I think that's up to Hagit to say to re-, re Okay. And Yes, we'll have another session, uh, hopefully, soon, okay. right, Jorg? We're planning, th this is the aim, that if uh, we'll have any purpose in continuing, so we'll do another one. So thank you very much for today. See you again shortly. Thanks so much, Kate. Okay. You're going to be good. Brilliant, Swedish. Thanks, everybody. Some great, amazing nice. mentors doing important work, and we thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So, Jörg, my Zoom uh, helper, on this link, or should we move into another? Uh, we move into Skype. Oh, we can move into Skype, absolutely.